Welcome back everyone to another lecture in our CMRP preparation course. In this lecture, we are going to learn about failure patterns. In our last lecture, when we discussed reliability, I said that lambda, which is the failure rate, equals 1 over the mean time between failure. And when I said that, I said this is under one condition, which is constant hazard. So what do I mean by this? In order to understand this, let's draw a graph showing the relation of hazard over time. We have learned in the last lecture how to draw a graph of F capital, which is the failure, and F small, which is the failure density, and the R, which is the reliability. Now, we are going to learn how to draw the hazard graph, which we will call it H. And the hazard is simply how likely the asset is to fail at a specific moment in its lifespan. And the hazard has different patterns. One of the patterns is having a constant hazard, as we can see here, which means that the hazard of the failure doesn't change over time, which means that we have a constant failure rate, and this is the case that we have discussed earlier in our last lecture, where lambda equals 1 over mean time between failure. But actually, having a constant failure rate over lifespan of an asset is not always the case, as in some cases, the failure pattern could be decreasing or increasing with time in other cases, as we are going to learn today. In order to understand what do we mean by this, we need to go back to the maintenance generations, which we have discussed earlier in the introduction to the maintenance lecture. In the first generation of failure, people believe that the hazard takes this pattern, which is being constant during the life of the asset till its last phase, which is the aging phase or the wear and tear phase, and in this case, the failure rate starts to increase, and this pattern is called the wear out pattern. Think of it as your new car. Engines often follow the wear out pattern. They operate reliably for a period, but as they age, the failure rate increases due to wear and tear in the components like pistons or bearings. But in the second generation, they started to notice that some of the assets face many problems when they are just new or has just been installed, maybe because of an issue in the manufacturing, issue with the installation, issue with the defected part, or a design issue. Then the rate of failure starts getting lower with the time as those issues are eliminated. Then the rate of failure becomes constant for most of the asset's life before increasing again in the aging phase. And this curve is very common with consumers' electronics like smartphones for example. They have early life failures due to manufacturing defects, a period of random failure, and eventually a wear out failures as components degrade over time. So the hazard actually is taking this pattern here, which is called bathtub curve, because it looks like a bathtub. And during the second generation of maintenance, they thought that this curve is applicable to all assets. But later on, in the third generation, it was discovered that actually there are multiple other patterns, as we can see here. Now, we have a total of six hazard curves. First, wear out pattern, which was initially adopted in the first generation. Second is the bathtub curve, which was adopted in the second generation. Then another four other patterns, which are fatigue, initial break-in, infant mortality, and finally, random failures. Unfortunately, many organizations are still following the second generation mentality which adopts the best of curves, which is very outdated right now. Actually, even in the fourth generation, there are many other curves that are being developed, but they are still under the studying phase. So now we can notice something very important about those patterns, that they could be categorized into two categories. First category is age-related failures, and it consists of three patterns wear out, bathtub curve, and fatigue. And those are age-related because we can see that the hazard increases over time when we get closer to the aging zone. And the other category is the random failures, and it consists of the other three curves, initial break-in, infant mortality, and random failure. Because here, we can see that the time has no effect actually in increasing the hazard. In case of random pattern, the hazard is constant, which means that the failure is totally random and it is totally independent on time. In case of initial break-in pattern, we have a rapid increase in hazard in the very beginning of the asset's life, 
then again it remains a constant till the end of the asset's life and finally infant mortality which is even more interesting because here we can see that the hazard is even higher at the beginning then the hazards remain constant and this could happen in case of industrial heavy machinery they tend to have high hazard of early failures due to initial defects or improper setup now let's remember one of the topics we discussed in pillar number five which is the preventive maintenance we learned that preventive maintenance is simply a time-based maintenance so we interfere at a fixed time interval to replace some parts that are expected to be worn out so what would be the effect of this preventive maintenance on a hazard pattern over time let's start with an age-related pattern like wear out in this case we will have a failure pattern that looks like this we will try to fix our interval for the preventive maintenance in order to interfere at this particular point before the aging phase so in this case instead of the hazard going up like this our preventive maintenance will bring the hazard down again to this point and again we will keep repeating the same preventive maintenance at the same interval to keep bringing down the hazard again before it hits the critical aging zone which makes sense and it will be useful for sure and the same concept could be followed with the fatigue curve and the bathtub curve now let's check the same in case of initial breaking pattern the hazard would be constant like this over time till we decide to interfere also by changing parts at some point we will have a very short period where the hazard is lower but then we will have a rapid increase in hazard to reach the same level again so we have spent time and resources without any noticeable reduction in the hazard now let's check the same in case of random failure pattern in a totally random failure pattern the hazard would be constant like this over time till we decide to interfere at some point by changing parts to start the hazard curve from the beginning again which is exactly the same so actually now we have spent the money and time and resources without reducing the hazard of the failure at all which is a waste of resources for sure in case of infant mortality pattern this is even more interesting because we would have a hazard pattern that looks like this over time till we decide to interfere by changing parts at some point and this would result in the pattern starting from the beginning again which would look like this so actually we have spent the money and increase the hazard of failure because the asset has been functioning properly and now we replaced it with a new part that could have a manufacturing malfunction which would result on a higher hazard of failures so now that we understand the difference between all of these failure patterns the question would be approximately what is the percentage of assets that follow each one of those patterns a study has been carried out in order to find out the distribution and the results were very interesting the distribution was as follows 7% of the assets followed the initial breaking pattern 14% of the asset followed the random failure and 68% of the assets followed the infant mortality pattern which means that 89% of the failure were found to follow a random failure pattern which is not age related while the 11% of failures were found to follow the age related patterns which was distributed as 4% for the past up curve, 2% for the wear out, and 5% for the fatigue curve. And now, do you remember in the fifth pillar when we discussed preventive maintenance, and we mentioned that preventive maintenance shouldn't exceed 20% of our total planned maintenance activities. Now this makes sense, because preventive maintenance is useful only with age-related failures, while with random failures it has no effect on reducing the hazard while it may even increase the hazard in some cases like infant mortality this is why maintenance based practices recommend to have maximum of 10 to 15 percent of our maintenance as reactive tasks 15 to 20 percent as time-based maintenance and 70 to 75 percent as predictive or reliability centered maintenance So now we are going to have a look at the bathtub curve as this is the only pattern that has the three different phases in an asset life which are the infant mortality, 
the useful life, and the wear out. Infant mortality phase is the only phase where the hazard decreases over time, and this happens in the initial phase. So why would this happen? This would happen due to manufacturing issue, a defective part, an installation issue, or even an operation issue, because the operator is still not used to the new asset. And as time goes, the failure hazard starts to decrease over time, till it reaches the useful life phase. And during the infant mortality phase, no maintenance can actually help, as we have explained a few minutes back. Actually, this is the task of the reliability engineer, and this depends on the design stage, or what we call the pre-life of the asset. It is the responsibility of the designer and the reliability engineer to minimize this infant mortality phase as much as possible, and this is by taking maintainability and serviceability into consideration during the design and by testing the asset during the design stage. One of the techniques that is used to minimize the phase is called the burnout technique, and this is a technique that was used before in some cars manufacturers such as Mercedes for example, but this was before non-destructive tests got developed. And this is simply by running the asset for a certain period in a trial mode under the normal operation conditions. And this is in order to discover any manufacturing issues. And this way, we are burning out the infant mortality phase. And when the asset is put into actual operation, we are actually starting from the useful life phase. And now the asset pattern will follow a wear out pattern. But this method is very time consuming and it's very costly also. Next phase is the useful life phase or normal life phase and in this phase the hazard is constant and the failure rate in this phase is constant also and in this phase the hazard equals lambda and it equals 1 over mean time between failure. We are going to explain how to calculate lambda during the infant mortality and the wear out phase in our next lectures. During this phase we can carry out maintenance tasks but mainly predictive maintenance tasks because preventive maintenance will not be useful in this phase because the hazard rate is constant anyway. And finally, the wear out phase. And this is the phase where preventive maintenance is most effective because it helps in replacing the worn out parts and reducing the hazard of the failure. Sometimes also we add a fourth phase here in this curve, which is the pre-life curve. And this is the design stage because we said that this phase is where the reliability is actually determined. So this is it for our lecture today. In our next video, we are going to keep learning about reliability, but this time we will learn about reliability distribution. So see you in our next video. Thank you.